Hello everyone, this is Dion Solo. How are you guys doing? Well, today we're back into the Mooney, and the reason why we're in the Mooney uh, on this particular video is this more or less is, is a find out video. Let's, uh, a question was asked, and it's, and I don't know the answer, so I'm, I'm kind of in the school of thought of let's find out. Now, the question that was asked was um, because I actually uh, gave some props, some populars, uh, to uh, Martin Pauly. Uh, Martin Pauly, uh, he did a video of talking about Lean of Peak, and I stumbled across his videos because I was just, you know, I like to learn more about how mixture works uh, in a, in a, in the engine of, of an airplane engine and how air fuel mixture works and he was explaining a uh, lean of peak and he had bar traps and matter of fact you can see as I have it highlighted here on certain parts of the video he's got you know a lot of this stuff I still do not understand even after watching his video it's one of those scenarios for me I'm kind of a slow learner when it comes to things like that where I'll have to pick it up as I you know as I watch it more or as I experience it myself. And, and he basically asked the question, he said, uh, you know, hey, Dion, um, you know, what uh, he's curious to know in the simulated engines and X-plane, do they match the real world airplane in terms of uh, EGT and CHT? So how close are they? So I thought, you know what? Uh, I don't know, so I'm just going to get in the airplane, do this video right here, and we'll just find out together. I mean, that's that's how I handle the problem. And so, without further ado, we are, like I say, we're in the Mooney, and because the Mooney is a, uh, I believe this one is simulated as a fuel-injected engine. Uh, and I'm sure his Bonanza, I think he's running around in a Bonanza. I'm pretty sh I think that's a fuel-injected engine as well. I'm not for sure on that, but I think it is. And so I thought I would just get in my Mooney and just fly around and just show what I know. And then he can sit there and feed back on this video of like, yeah, Dion, you did it all wrong, which I expect. Because like I say, I'm, I'm very, very green at this stuff. But I, you know, it, I'm just curious. You know, I want to learn. You know, just that, that's the most important thing. You're always learning every day. You're always learning something new. And that's what's cool about life is you're always learning something new. So anyway, we're at my home airport here at KWJF, Lancaster, California. This is an airport that was done by Bug Eater 64, my comrade and colleague uh, in crime uh, in flight aviation with X-Plane. Um, he made this uh, airport out of the stock, which is doesn't look, it's all barren, basically. It doesn't have a lot of anything, but he changed it up here a little bit, and uh, which looks really good. But anyway, so we'll go ahead and get on into the airplane here, and we'll go ahead and start it up and get going um, I do have SciTech equipment which is outside the sim for those of you that don't know I have the um, you know couple of uh, two thro uh, two six I have a six pack throttle quadrant um, nose uh, Cessna nose trim uh, yoke uh, switch panel uh, the the uh, radio panel and the multifunction panel and uh, so you'll see a lot of stuff that I do is going to be outside the simulation because uh, it's just that's why I bought it for easier access to be able instead of me having to sit here and actually pop up. But you can see all the all the little you do have pop ups with this Alabeo, um aircraft. And I'm basically showing this for people who don't who don't have X plane and don't fly in simulations. Um, that we do have pop-ups and whatnot so we can actually see things a little bit better you can't manipulate with these pop-ups on some of these windows like the uh the uh 530 you can but the others you can't uh some others you can't so anyway we're going to go ahead and get rid of the uh um that's the one advantage of simulation over real world you can't get rid of this this is in your way <laughs> but in this case i can just turn it off and get it out of my way so i can see the buttons behind it so anyway we're going to go ahead and start everything up and uh, we'll go ahead and throw our battery on our um avionics and that and our, our uh, avionics master switch and our um panel and uh, get that going on for us so now we are consuming battery our current battery is at 23.8 if i switch over to battery number number one we're at 23.7 so right now they're all um they're all about the same uh while we're getting set up here i'm going to go ahead and hit one of my buttons which in turn now you see the battery go up because i just turned on the gpu so now we have ourselves a simulated gpu going and uh if we want to make this a little bit more 
uh, realistic here. We'll go ahead just for funds and we'll throw in a, a GPU here. So there we go. Now we can say that we have our GPU connected. Whether your GPU is actually you can really connect to a, uh, a Mooney, I don't know. But for simulation purposes, we got we're not running off of the battery now. Um, the uh, the the East EDM. Unfortunately, this is just uh, doesn't really do anything. None of the buttons actually work, so we can't take advantage of this piece of equipment, which is which is a disappointment. Uh, it would be nice if uh, Alabeo would have modeled this. Um, I I've seen other airplanes or other aircraft that uh, do have this modeled. Uh, they took the time to actually mod it because I know there's a lot of programming involved to make this happen. So unfortunately, we can't use this. It's just kind of a sod there, just giving us a bunch of stuff like we're actually doing something, but in reality, we're not. Uh, the main the main meat and potatoes here for discussing lean a peak and everything else is going to be our uh, red little knob there, and obviously our um, uh, you know our uh, EGT and our uh, tachometer, our RPM. So, and of course our manifold pressure, of course. So at any rate, so we'll go ahead and uh, get ready to go here. Uh, first thing I wanna do is I wanna reset my uh, equipment here just to get it so I can actually, it's displayed. We'll go ahead and preset uh, to um, our uh, uh, heading to uh, 240, so we're good to go there. And uh, we'll go ahead and click the ATIS and get the ATIS information. And it is kind of quiet. So we'll fix that real quick. Sky clear. Temperature 10. Dew point minus 10. Altimeter 2992. Arriving runway 06. Departing runway 06. Advise on initial contact you have Zulu. Okay, we have Zulu runway six, and it's two nine nine two. So we'll go ahead and adjust our. You know, what amazes me is how people can see this because in the simulation world, it's kind of difficult. So that's why I have my SciTech equipment, so I can just adjust it there digitally instead of having to rely on this. You can kind of see it two nine nine two right there, but it's it's uh for me it's a little rough. So that's why I have my stuff on the outside of the sim. So that takes care of that, and uh, we got that going on there. We'll go ahead and uh, start the engine, and uh, we'll go ahead and throw on our beacon. We'll go ahead and throw on our navigation uh, lights, and we'll go ahead and uh, get rid of the GPU because we don't want to tangle up the cord um, that's going into the airplane. So we'll go back over here. We'll go ahead and hide that and go away, and then we'll turn that off. So now we are on battery power right now. You can see the voltage is starting to drop right now. We'll go ahead and turn on the fuel for three seconds. One, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000. And then we'll go ahead and crack this up to about 50% on our, uh, our power there. And I'll go ahead and put full on our uh, props. And uh, we'll go ahead and start this thing. And it's not going to start because look what I forgot to do. I forgot to turn this on. <laughs> and we'll get rid of that because we're not doing an actual flight. So now we're actually working off of our, the left uh, engine, our left uh, tank, which has actually got uh, 12 gallons in it. So we'll go ahead and uh, burn off of that one. So uh, as far as it actually probably as the real world, you can see how easily that start. Probably not, you know, in that regard, uh, probably not. So as we're at idle here, um, I can go ahead and lean the crap out of this. And you can see the uh, EGT is starting to go up right now. Just by me here at idle. Is that a good idea or not? Probably not. But we are in a simulation world. But you can, I can hear the uh, RPM is falling. I'll go ahead and pump the RPM up. We'll put the RPM up, uh, which is right here, up to about 1,000 RPM. And there's 1,000-ish. And then I'll go ahead and just lean the crap out of it. See, right now I just almost killed it right there. So I, I can't, on the ground here, not in the air, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm at 25% of uh, actually... So I'm just on the cusp of just stalling the engine. I've got this 
this thing pulled almost all the way back. If I go too much more, um, you can see how I I am just about ready to stall the damn thing. So for right now, we'll go 50% uh, throttle. And you can see how it just immediately goes up. Now if I go full rich, okay, there's full rich right there. And you can see how now we got now we're just loading the crit thing full of fuel. And I'll set my uh, uh, flaps were down. Um, anyway, so now I'm going to pull it back. This is this is everything that we're doing on the ground here. You can see how the how I'm pulling it back. I'm getting towards 50% halfway. And if I go more than halfway, and then you'll see it gets to a point. And then it'll start coming back down again. So I guess that right there, I guess you would say is is uh, peak, I'm assuming. That's what that means is peak right there. So I'm not going to hang around very long, but I, my head temperature is only 103 degrees. So now I just pull it back more, 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 more. Pulling it back, pulling it back, pulling it back. And that pulling it back, pulling it back. And now you saw that it was starting to go down. But probably on the ground in this scenario with a cold start like that's probably not a good representation. So let's just get it right about there, let's say. And we're at 1,000 RPM. So we're actually on the back side of peak right now into the blue. And uh, you know, we're really... We're back. <laughs> We're back to say the least. Now, uh, they said we want to take off at runway 6 here at KWJF, so we'll do that. And we'll just kind of skirt. There's nobody here in the world but me, so I can kind of get away with uh, breaking the FAA rules here. And we'll go to runway 6, which means the sun is going to be in our face. Now I just went ahead and pulled it back up to full rich right now. Our density attitude, or our altitude is uh, 2,600 feet. Our cowling flaps are fully out. If I put them all the way in, which in the real world, from what I understand, is not a good thing. I'm just going to keep it in the blue for right now. But we are actually uh, rich of peak because I have not went pulled it all the way back where it went all the way and then it started going back. I haven't done that yet. So to answer his question, yeah, I think it does. I, I think it does. I'm not for sure, but I think it does. And you can see the temperatures are starting to climb a little bit, at least on the oil temperature because I have the cowling flaps closed. And the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius out there. So what is that, 50-something, 60-something? I'm not, uh, my Fahrenheit and Celsius conversion are not the best. And I should have had my taxi lights on, by the way. And I should have my, uh, now you can just hear the, uh, the RPM just changed because I just turned on my, uh, we were working off of the battery. I just turned on my alternator. So now we're, work now we're working off of uh, sh ship power. Go ahead and throw my pedo heat on. And let's just go ahead and just take off, climb to 4,000 feet, which means in order for me to do that, i got to go down here and put 4,000 feet. Uh, which way am I going to go? I'm going to go, I'm going to go towards Bakersfield. So yeah, we'll go 4,500 feet. And we'll do our run up. over here on our run-up side of things and we'll just stop right here set the brake I'll put flaps to full again uh, cowling flaps to full um, 
I'll go ahead and uh, do full rich. I'll go ahead and crank this thing up to I'll see if I can stop at 20, keep it at 2,500 RPM. Let's see if this thing moves. Nope. So you can't can't go full. They don't like that. <laughs> well, they say in the uh, in the destructions go about 2,000 RPM. Now I'm at full rich, and then we'll lean it back. You see the power loss right there immediately. Let's see if I can go past it, and I did. Okay, now we're on. The back side of the peak, I believe, because I already went quickly. I already went. Okay, there you go. See how the needle moves on the engine temperature? And you can see the RPM as well. Like I said, a lot of this I'm, I'm still learning. I, you know... I'm sure I'm going to be corrected, and that's perfectly fine because whatever you teach me is going to make me a better pilot, whether, you know, in the simulation world especially. So anyway, we got our run up here, and we can't go too far. This thing starts to want to move. Yeah, I'm going to try to push it, but it's going to start to move on us. Yeah. Okay, now we're back to full rich again. I'll go back to idle. A thousand. Put a thousand here. And then we'll go ahead and uh, just line up for the runway and go. That clear sky here. Uh, I'm using real world time and r as of the, rec of the time of this recording, using real world time and I'm using real world uh, weather. At least I believe I am. What? <laughs> I better check real quick. Uh, no, I'm not. I am not using real weather. I need to fix that. Boom. So let it load. Might help if I uh, refresh. Okay, there it is. And this needs to go all the way back to... Uh, we don't want to customize. We want to go real world weather. Okay. Let it finish. Let it, let it ping the weather. Hopefully it, it accepted it, and then it did. So it pinged the weather, so we're good to go there. So now we're using real-world weather. All right. So we'll go ahead and take off. We'll do a rolling takeoff here. Let me get my flaps out. Let me get my... All my stuff going. You can hear it squelching because I am really. Like I said, I was hastily taking off. Got my pitch trim set. Okay, I got full rich right now, full everything. Everything is just full as a tick. So I'm dumping a lot of fuel in there right now. You know, we can pop this up too, which is the fuel flow. Now I'll pull it back a little bit. Okay, now we're at 50% on the lever, and you can see immediately how the EGT at 50% immediately started to go up. The wonders of flight simulation, you can just recklessly change things. And we're still, we're still rich of peak, and the reason why I say that, I, at least I feel we are rich of peak right now, is, uh, well actually, you know what, Let's, let me get, get ahead of myself here. Let me go ahead and uh, turn. We'll go ahead and set our heading over the scenery over Lancaster, California, USA. Uh, I'm going to point us towards Palmdale, VOR, PMD. 
and I'll go ahead and turn that on and I'll go ahead and do indicated airspeed at 106 climb so that way the uh, it is controlling it right now I am not controlling it go ahead and turn off our landing lights go ahead and turn off our taxi lights I'll go ahead and turn off our fuel pump boost because we're already at uh, where we want to be I have I got the throttle wide open right now and I have got we are on the what I feel we are on the rich of peak right now so now I'm gonna pull it back let me get my I didn't get my flaps up so let me let me, let me clean this this airplane up I'm still purposely at wide open this thing is just wide open right now and I have that on purpose We're burning 15 gallons per hour and then I'm gonna start Okay, now look, see right now we are still, yeah, we're still rich, rich of peak. Let's just go back, 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 continue to go back. Now you can see where it stopped, oh, right there, right there. Right, right, right about there. See where, and then we start pulling it back. Now we are on the back side of the peak as I'm pulling it back some more, trying to control it. Just slight adjustments. And now I'm just a little, try to keep in that, in that blue. And you see at 4,000 feet, I'm doing 156 knots with a 12 knot tailwind. Um, my tailwind is coming from right about there at uh, 262. So now I'm going to turn. Let's go towards Las Vegas. So let's spin this thing. And we're still only at 4,000 feet and we're almost 160 knots. Orthos are awesome. Make my flight simulation experience a little bit more real. I want to make sure I stay out of Edwards Air Force uh, restricted airspace, which you, which I'm moving over with my mouse is right there, which is right here. We don't want to get shot down. Okay, so we're we can pull back because we are uh, done turning. It's the uh, I'm too aggressive. Okay, now we can pull back on our uh, cowling flaps and watch our temperature go up. Okay, cowling, perhaps, cowling flaps is at 60%. I still have to learn uh, what the uh, optimal uh, temperature of the uh, head temperature is. You can see we're at uh, 284. And unfortunately, because this thing right here does not work, um, I don't, you know, you, you don't have the ability to figure out, you know, first cylinder and then last cylinder and all the things that you have that you, you know, that was described in uh, uh, Martin's video. Um, we don't, in the simulation, that part of it, we don't have. And as you can see, I can lead it back even more. And you can see we're doing 157 knots. Uh, ground speed, we're doing 182. So we are, at 4,500 feet, we are screaming. Now, let's go ahead and climb. Let's go ahead and take it up to uh, 8,500 feet. That way we can clear any obstacles that we may encounter. Let's go to 8,500 feet. And what I'm going to do is uh, right now, because we are going so fast, I'm going to adjust my indicated airspeed on my SciTech equipment at 157. So it's a gradual climb instead of an abrupt. And then I will pull back. Obviously, this isn't a feature that is in 
the uh, Mooney. So I am kind of cheating here a little bit. And we are going to work our way back to about 100 and uh, we'll go to 110 knots climb. There's 10 degrees right there. We're at 120 right now. Let's see what we're changing here. I'll pull. I'll push the the. Uh, see now I'm pushing the uh, lean. I'm leaning the airplane even more. My objective is is I'm going to take this thing up eventually to 10,500 feet. Um, or actually we're at 85. And we're actually going east, so I really should be at 9,000. So I stand corrected because we are going east. So let me take us up to 9,000. 500 feet. And if I had radios and talking to a tower, I'd be doing all that stuff, which I need to learn how to do. I don't know how to do that, all that stuff. One of the components of a pilot that I have not learned. So, just keeping in the end of the blue range. And you can see the head temperatures at 321. We are climbing at 800 feet per minute, 120 knots. And we'll take us up to 9,000 feet, and then we'll play around again and see what it does. Uh, actually, we're actually playing around as we speak because we're actually moving the EGT as we are climbing. Whether that is normal behavior in a real, uh, in a real scenario or not, I don't know. Because, again, I don't have that personal experience doing this in a real uh, a real setting take a swig of my coffee here and it is 7:32 in the morning as it says in the, on the clock there and I found when I sit there and play around with the propeller and try to uh, adjust the prop you know, try to give the prop more bite by backing off my RPM from 2,500 or less. Um, I don't really have any, uh, I actually just lose performance. I, I guess this airplane is not set up to where, yes, I have the ability to pull back on the prop and you, and they have they actually have it modeled right here. But as far as actual being able to get, you know, faster speeds, uh, it seems to be it. It wants to be at 2,500 RPM uh, at my optimal uh, performance. Unless there's something I'm doing wrong that I just haven't learned yet. That's where it could be the case. So as we are slowly climbing, and as you can see, the exhaust gas temperatures are changing. RPM is not. RPM does not change. I got the RPM totally open. It, it doesn't care. At least in the sim. Real world, I don't know. But in the sim, it doesn't care. And also, the resolution of these uh, SciTech throttle quadrant is not as robust as, as it could be. Because I, if I just move just a slight, you'll see it'll, it'll have erratic. Um, not quite there. And also, these are these are like three years old, too. I've, I've had these, my, th my throttle quadrant system and all the stuff that I talked about, I've had it for plus three years now. So, as we're climbing... We're at 8,200 feet. I don't know by me pulling back my indicated airspeed. I know it will create a, a, a quick boost in. Uh, it'll, it'll settle back down, though. We're at 8,500 now. I'll lean this uh, out more. A 
little more. Be nice to me. As we're climbing, it's it's going to go up, looks like. But I do, my cowling flaps are at 50%. Um, I don't, they, uh, Alabeo, the maker of this airplane, did not model um, the cowling flaps. So you don't know really, really where the position is other than me having bound one of my, out of the six throttle quadrants, or the six uh, levers I have on the two throttle quadrants, I just bound one of them to it. So that's how I kind of know we're at 50% because it's halfway from top to bottom, you know, that kind of thing. And again, I don't know where the sweet spot is for the uh, head temperature where you're really supposed to be. Okay, now we have made it to 9,500 feet. And we are actually in the clouds a little bit. You can see the clouds right there. And I gotta get a relationship of where we are. Okay, so we're, we're heading towards Apple Valley. So we're just gonna let it uh, climb up in speed. Let's see what our speed is. Like I said, this is all, I mean, I'm burning 10 gallons per hour right now. And I do need to flip, switch tanks, I noticed. So let me switch tanks here. And uh, let's see if I can uh, kick it back just a wee bit more. Okay, if I'm doing everything right, it looks like it's kind of fluctuating there. You can see the exhaust gas temperatures, but 10 is about normal, and we are doing 143 knots. So at 4,000 feet, we're actually we were, we're with a thicker uh, atmosphere closer, i.e. closer to the ground, we were actually um, going faster. But unfortunately, I can't, uh, where the areas that I fly, um, I don't want to be less than 10,000 feet, really. <laughs> okay, so we are heading towards Doggett right now. Doggett's in front of us. Take a go on the passenger seat here or co pilot seat, how you whatever you want to describe it. One thing I do like about this Mooney, you can see how much fuel's in the tank just by looking outside the window. I think that's kind of cool. The only airplane I have it's that's that way, along with the fact that we also have uh, speed brakes. Now, I have no other general aviation aircraft that has speed brakes, so that's model which is pretty cool. If I flip them out. <laughs> So yeah, so it, uh, I, based on what you see there, uh, Martin, uh, Mr. Pauly, tell me what you think. Is this what you experience in the real world? Because um, this is what we have here in the simulation with X-Plane with this particular aircraft. What I probably ought to do is I probably, because this is a fuel injected, I don't know if the... Um, uh, Strike Commander 500S is fuel injected or not? I don't know, but I do have the Carinado, basically the same company, different name, same company. Uh, if the if the uh, f twin uh, that the 500S, if it has, I can load that up and see, and just tag it on uh, right after this. Right after this, I can just tag it on. I'll make this a long video, but we can you know compare together the differences. Now, if I go back on the uh, propellers now, you will see that, uh, let's see what happens. Okay, we're at 2,400 RPM. Now we're, at, now, now I have to, uh, like I said, I, I'm experimenting. Okay, my EG is still in the blue. 
but I see my speed is starting to deteriorate. My speed is starting to go down because I uh, kicked back on the uh, RPM. So yeah, if I want maximum speed, RPM full, baby. At least this is how the model is. And I'm doing a ground speed of 191 knots. Okay, so let's, um, uh, closest airport, well, it's actually Doggett. So we'll just, we'll just head right on, we'll head right on to Doggett. Just go on to Doggett. Go ahead and close these windows here. I always get that fuel, war it doesn't have a fuel warning, well, it does have it right there. Fuel, left fuel tank is weak. But we'll go ahead and go on over and land. There's actually, uh, where, where's this right here? This right here is CA something of another. I'm not going to land there. You can see how the overlays of uh, X planes and the uh, orthos for XP uh, overlaid everything there. Unusual. But anyway. Let's just go ahead and concentrate on getting to uh, Doggett. Doggett, we're about 25 nautical miles away. And we are, and the whole time I've had the throttle just wide open and just been adjusting everything via the uh, exhaust gas temperatures. So hopefully, uh, Martin, this information will help answer your question at least with the Mooney um, and tell me your thoughts because I'd like to know because I don't know and I'm coming up on the 15 freeway now let's go ahead and lose some altitude because yes we are 20 nautical miles away and we are screaming like a bat out of hell now let's see how this performs when I'm uh, I am uh, descending. Uh, what is uh, Doggett? Doggett is 1,900 feet. So let's go 2,000. Sure, why not? And again, I'm not doing a checklist or anything fancy there. I'm just, let's just get, let's make it happen type scenario. And we're going to pull back on the throttle. And, of course, it's yelling at me because I don't have my gear down. So we'll leave that there. We'll pull our, uh, I don't know about, uh, okay, we're still on, we're still Lena Peak right now. Because if I go forward with it, you can see how it just changed right there. But let me pull it, I, you missed it. Let me pull it back. Okay, there is... See, right there is, is top of peak right there. And then now we're pulling it back. Now we're on the back side. Now we're at Lena Peak. And then our RPM is supposed to be at 2200 on our descent. So we'll do that. Oh, we, can't, we can't achieve that because we are at Lena Peak. So we are actually going to have to give it some fuel to be able to achieve our 2100 RPM. Yeah, see, I can't uh, go less than th that on my throttle. And I also need to, uh, we're only at 72 knots and we're not descending, so let me fix that. Let's uh, descend at 1,100 feet per minute. Where's that going to put me? That's going to put me about 3 miles at 2,000 feet, so let's... I have the other equipment, uh, the other SciTech equipment, or not a SciTech, another uh, a program that's on a network computer that shows, it has a little bar like you'd see on a, on a Boeing that tells me where, okay, you're, no, you're going to end up being at 2,000 feet right there, you know, that kind of thing. All right, so um, our speed's going back up. Our RPM is going back up, so let's go down to 2,000 RPM. Or 
roughly 2,000 RPM. Yeah, our temp we're, we're, we're ice cold. And we'll take a peek outside real quick. Get my bearings here. Okay, that's Barstow. That's the uh, a little place before Barstow. I don't know what you call it. Don't remember. <laughs> Offhand. But right there's the field. There's uh, Doggett right out there. And inter Interstate 40 going like this on to Grandma's house. And the wind is currently at uh, 210 at 25 knots, so we actually have a, ta a 25 knot tailwind right now. And, uh, okay, now we're on Lena Pink again. So I'm trying to, uh, or on the backside of Lena Peak. Like I said, just a little smart move, just a touch on my yo or my uh, throttle, it just goes crazy. Because the resolution is just not there. And this is gonna this is gonna change like dynamically anyway because we are losing altitude, temperatures changing, yada yada yada. There is Doggett right there. I'm, I'm sitting here looking over here where my mouse is. In actuality, it's actually right over there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to just adjust our heading to uh, 070. And we're descending at 128 knots, 166 ground speed. And you can see our EGT is constantly... Uh, in flux, maintaining 2200 RPM on our descent. But again, I'm I'm fighting the uh, EGT right now, just by kissing the uh, the lever. And we are at Lena Peak, by the way. Okay, now we're gonna go, I'm just gonna go forward and we'll go Rich of Peak. There's Peak right there. See Peak right there, so now we'll go Rich of Peak. Now you notice the temperature went up a little bit on the, uh, on the oil temperature. Uh, I need to know what Doggett's uh, radio frequency is. So, to accomplish that task, I am going to bring up Little Nav. As we are nose diving at 1,000 feet per minute, so let's back that off to uh, 500 feet per minute as I'm stalling to get uh, Little Nav up and operating here so I can see where I'm at and I can, okay, it's 132. Oh, 132, 2983.
Yeah. So still 240, so yeah, we'll land on runway. Let me zoom in on little nav here. We'll take 26. So we're going to take this runway right here. What's our gus? Do we have any gus? No? Okay. All right, well. Okay, autopilot is off. Now it's my plane, so God have mercy on my soul as I take over. So sink down, gear down. Full ridge, full props. Put some power back in to everything. Obviously, can't see the runway right now. Well, there it is. This is going to be a short turn, short and quick turn. And we can turn that off. 2981. So it actually changed on me. So you can quickly see real fast. That's what we're doing right now at this moment in time. We'll just swing around and come in. At least that's the idea anyway. We'll see how that pans out. Doing 100 knots indicated. We'll go out a little bit further. And I'll make my hard turn. You can try that. And it's way back over there. And there's the road, so I know it's kind of at the road, and I, and I have an advantage because I'm actually looking at the map I just showed you. I can glance over and look at the map so I know where I'm at. And I need to be a little bit more aggressive on my turn. the nose down a little bit and now it's coming into view get my nose trim trim out flaps down we're doing 120 knots we got to slow this bad boy down deploy some brakes nose trim back up Brakes are deployed. Brakes up. Holding at 95 knots. Not perfectly lined up, but I have a long runway, so as long as I keep my speed down. Yeah, it says references is like 70 knots or something. I'm coming in at 89. Try to line this bad boy up. Little bit of right rudder. Coming in, coming in, coming in. We'll see on the. You'll see on the right, a left-hand side of the screen, towards the center of the screen on the right-hand side. You'll see my feet per minute once I touch down. Oh, this isn't too bad. Come on, I say that. Did I, did I jinx myself? Land, land, land. I ain't got all day. 111 feet per minute.
100 feet per minute, two Gs. Ah, that's twice the, twice your body weight. Ooh, that's that's a little hard. And I did, and I forgot to turn on my lights. Yay me! I forgot to turn on my lights. That's what checklists are for that I just did that I totally ignored. Okay, everything is up. Everything is clean except for my flaps. But overall, that wasn't too bad. And we'll just get off the runway here. November 502 Delta Mike is clear runway, but we are on now on another runway. Where runway? Where runway number f four? Uh, four taxiing to Arcane. Strobes off. Landing lights off. All right, well, anyway, so we don't need to go too much further than this. But like I said, so, uh, Martin, you can make the determination now that you've seen what you have seen if this does uh, Lena Peak and Richard Peak. To me, I think it does. I, I don't know, and I'd love to hear your feedback uh, on it. So that is the Mooney um, uh, M20R ovation. And uh, we'll just park right here and call it a day. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video. And then I will uh, get in the air. Instead of going through the process, I'm going to get in the air in the, uh, uh, in the uh, Strike Commander uh, 500S. And then, because uh, I don't know if it's an injected airplane or not. I don't know if it's a standard carbureted airplane. Then we'll see if we can do the same thing that I just did with this fuel injected. So, because it might, I don't think it's X plane based. I think it is individual developer based. So you could have a developer making the same airplane that is not going to model that lean of peak and, and rich of peak and all that sort of thing that we just got through. At least in, from my perspective, anyway, um, it's it's going to be. Uh, based on the individual developer of said aircraft to be able to what they model is if you see it or not. I think it's I think that's how it works. I'm not for sure, but you know you can tell you you got more now that you've got this. You can give me feedback and tell me what you think. So anyway, so I'm going to be right back. I'm going to switch airplanes and I'll switch to the uh, uh, 500s and then we'll see what that does. So I'll be back. Okay, I am back, and this time we are in the um, we are in the uh, S or the uh, 500S, uh, the uh, nice, wonderful uh, Rockwell design uh, Aero Commander 500S, which is an awesome airplane. It's one of my favorite airplanes as well. I mean, I got a lot of favorite airplanes. I mean, there's very few airplanes that I don't like, <laughs> but. Uh, but anyway, this is my own personal uh, Solo Swings uh, livery that I created. But anyway, um, I have cowling flaps totally open, as you can see there. Um, unfortunately, the way this model is designed, you cannot bind. Uh, I don't have the I don't have enough th levers to be able to bind because we're in a twin engine. So this is going to be a little bit different, but I think it's going to be about the same, and we'll find out once we get in the air. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and throw in our landing lights, strobes. I've already done my run-up, um, and we'll go ahead and uh, take off. Um, we're at full rich right now, and as you can look and see right down here, here's the little uh, EGT. When I'm at 50%, uh, here's 50% right now, and you can see it's going to the little stars, and I'm, I have not been able to figure it out, well, a little bit more than rich, or, is uh, the stars are supposed to be I think are supposed to be the sweet spot uh, for this airplane. And again, I don't know if this airplane is fuel injected or if it's old school uh, uh, carburetor uh, type or not. I don't know. But uh, I know when I was reading the manual on this from the developer of this, of Carinado, who developed this particular airplane, uh, the, that's usually where you want to run it at is the sweet spot is the uh, uh, is little stars. You can see I almost killed the engine on the right engine right there when I just did that. So that's what we'll be working from. But we're actually going to see if these things go up and down. And also, too, the uh, uh, the RPM. I have more control of the RPM with uh, this airplane than I did with the other one. Uh, of the 
of the uh, props. So we'll see how this how this plays. So let's go ahead and get in the air. We'll go full rich right now. We'll go ahead and do a rolling takeoff. Uh, flaps down to one. Uh, I've got my. Uh, uh, I'm all kicked up and ready to go here. I don't think there's anything that I am missing other than the fact I'm doing everything wrong as far as charts and stuff or uh, checklists and stuff, but that's okay. We're, this is simulation, so I'm not going to worry about it because that's not my focus right now. So anyway, we'll go ahead and go full throttle on this airplane and uh, get in the air. And we are at 80 knots. And we are off the ground. Back off on our uh, pitch up on our uh, pitch is a little high there. So we'll that was an abrupt <laughs> gear up and flaps up. And you can see our nose pitch down as soon as I put those flaps up. And like I see, you can see how it's down a lot down here. How it's really, really low temperatures. Doesn't give us the actual n numerical values, which is unfortunate. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll go ahead and have our heading. So now we are set at heading, and we want to go to uh, 120 knots. And we want to climb to 4,500 feet, just like I was on the last one. And we're almost there already. So we'll let the airplane do its magic. Now, I know this airplane does not have... Um, it's not recognizing my uh, indicated airspeed climb. And this airplane's a little bit different. The autopilot does not want to behave uh, like the other one because it's an older. The way they got this one set up, and now it's going to now it's going to settle down at 4,500 eventually. But it's going to uh, nose pitch down until it gets settled. I'm controlling my throttle right now just to make sure I'm not uh, going crazy. this thing settle okay now if I go full throttle right now with 2500 rpm this thing is because it's a twin engine I'm already I'm probably gonna get an over speed here pretty quick or it's gonna start to porpoise that's what it's gonna do is it's gonna start to porpoise One thing at a time, what I'm doing is I'm making sure everything's full throttle, everything is rock and rolling, and then um, I'm going to run out of uh, air, uh, space really quick. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this way. We're going to go north at uh, 330. See, we're at 170 knots already. At 4,500 feet, 4,600 feet. And we got a lot of fuel going in right now. I'm going to start pulling back on the fuel. Watch the, uh, watch this up right here. EG temperatures. See, this right here is supposed to be a sweet spot right there. But you can see it. And you can see how it's where we meet we max peak out now we're starting on the now we're on the back side of peak we're still at 2500 rpm full throttle it's not quite meet reaching the stars right there it is a little bit so the stars is about where the peak is and you can see right here I'll just pop it out this one right here has actually got a pop out and I think I can actually can I make it bigger yeah, I can make it bigger. Okay. So now you can see that uh, okay, so right there 
140, 150, or 60, 70, 80, 90. So about, about 1690 is about where it peaks out at, roughly. 1693 on both engines. And then, it, then one actually starts to decrease quicker than the other one. And I'm burning 14 gallons an hour. Doing 170 knots, indicated, 183. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pull it back. And we can pull it back down to the star. We'll see, if, we'll see what we can get away with. Okay, there's 10 gallons an hour right there. And our head temperature is 135, very, very cold. Let me go ahead and close the cowling flaps. Okay, the cowling flaps should go away right here. And they are. Now the temperature should start to rise. Especially uh, fuel, or uh, here's our oil temperatures right here. Our oil temperature should start to go up. And you can see we are pretty right on on our, uh, on our props because there's this, this, this right here is not moving at all. We are very synced up. Now I need to uh, rotate, so let's go to uh, 80, right around 80, heading 80, 080. So I got the, uh, now I have lost power, I am at 164, but I am turning right now. So let me, because uh, I'm on the back side of peak already. See, your video has made it so now I'm aware of, you know, rich peak and, and uh, lean peak, which I had no idea. You know, I had no clue. And so now we're at 163. I'm going to go ahead and pump it back up so I can get my power back and see where my power is. go back to peak right now I'm still running cold uh, cold cylinders okay now I'm just backed off a little bit and then we're backed off just a smidge so where's our little star at? Where are we at on our star? Uh, little star, little star. Okay, see, we're a little high on our star. So let's pull back until we are above our little stars. Oh, now we're too low. See, again, just little, little corrections. It goes nuts. So there we go. We're kind of at our star. A reference point, I guess you could say. Now I'm going to pull back on the uh, props. Let's see what we do in our props. I'm going to pull it all the way back to 1950. There's 1940. Okay, engine number two is at 1951. And then, uh, but you see, even when I pulled them, pulled that, the props all the way back so much, and you can see I, I'm pegging. <laughs> Look at the oil temperature. Now I got to get those flaps back open because I'm going to burn the engine up. Our oil is very, very hot. Engine cylinder temperature is just fine. And also, you also notice that we are. Um, off of our little stars, our little reference stars on the EG, EG temperatures. But it doesn't matter. I, I got the idea, you know, by I think um, I'm getting more performance if I have my props up, though. Go full props again. A 
back up to 2,500. I'm doing 2,575 right now. Let's go to 2,500. Bob, where are you? We're at 2514. We're kind of at the same. Again, I I have resolution issues with these. Uh, but it gets the idea. We're doing 10 gallons an hour right now. And where's our star? We are kind of... See if we can pull back. Nope. We're, we're too far. We're, we're beyond the... Uh, yeah, we're beyond help. See, I about killed the engine right there. So we're as far as we can go back. And where's our little star? Get our little star back. So anyway, so that's where we're at. Is, uh... Right there, uh, now that with this airplane at 4,600 feet, uh, we're doing 164 knots, 191. That was about the same as what was on the other airplane. And we're in two engines. So let's go ahead and crank up the, uh, the elevation. Let's take it on up to, uh, uh, where was I at, 9,500? Yeah, see right now we are, we're going to actually, uh, we're, we're actually in dangerous territory here. So let me change my heading. We're actually in restricted airspace right now. So let's go right about there. And then, uh, like I say again, we will continue. Yeah, see, uh, Edwards Air Force Base is right there. So not a good idea. But we'll do the climb. We'll try to climb at a 120 knots. Let's see if it'll uh, take it. Nope, it's going to go back. So what I got to do is I got to turn it off, re re reset it up. Pitch up, I say, but but not not that high. <laughs> Too much. I have to manually set everything because this one, this this uh, particular model with this particular uh, autopilot is uh, is brutal. It is not forgiving. We'll take it up to 9,500 uh, feet. And we'll climb at 1,200 feet per minute if it'll allow us to do it. We're already doing 14, so okay, fine. And we are kind of a little above our little sweet spots there. And now we're starting to get, temperature's starting to get too hot. Now I gotta give it. Yep, see, I went too far. And as we're climbing, it's gonna change. So now we're at 7,000 feet. And, uh,. You see where the throttles are right there. Of 
We're kind of at peak right now. And we can't do Lena pink right now because, we, I guess, because we're climbing, I guess. Our fuel flow is 11, 11 gallons and one, one on engine number two on the right engine. And on the left engine, we're doing 10. Okay, I lean this one out just a little bit more. So now we're doing 10.3. That's another thing I can, that's another gauge I can use is this thing right here, I guess. There's 10. And what happens if I do the same thing over here? See, we're a little bit high, so uh, I got multiple ways here I can play around, I guess. But anyway, we're climbing at 106 knots, so now we're going to be, well, now that we're reaching altitude, I got to snap. Snap it to maintain it. And now you're going to see my speed go up like crazy. Let's see what I can get away with. Now we're at 140 knots. And it's still still going. Come up on 150, 10 gallons. And we are on the back side of peak. We're on uh, the lean side of peak. So again, it, it, it works. You know, what was said in your video, it does work. It's just that you're on the um, different airplanes. So like I say, I don't, I, I still, I'm still in the opinion that it is a, oh, I guess I'll shut him off. Now it's going to kick into Lancaster. Um, it has to cycle, then it'll, it, then it'll shut up. <laughs> there. Um, anyway, um, I think it's up to the individual uh, aircraft developer that develops for X-Plane. It's, it's not X-Plane itself. X-Plane just kind of says, here's the basic premise, you guys, to make your airplane real-world uh, compatible, you make it so. You know, X-Plane just says, doesn't care. It's like, here's the parameters, you work with it. And so different airplanes are going to do different things. I think is the overall um, is the overall of what this is. See, we're trying to get 10.1, and you can see that we are kind of a uh, little higher than the stars. And if I try to, uh, I can, I'm leaning it some more. And we are we are wide open on our throttle, and we are um, our props are at right around twenty five oh seven. Like I said at the start of the video, I have a whole other set of gauges or uh, redundancy where I have a whole other set of gauges on a different computer that has that's running a different program that's basically taking the data from Xplane and putting it in this other screen. So and it's all digital. So I have you have you have your analog that you see right here, and then you have the digital, which is uh, off camera, for lack of a better metaphor. So I think to sum up. Everything is, uh, you know, it's it, it just depends on the it depends on the airplane. What it all depends on. This one we're doing a little bit faster. We're doing 193 knots indicated, but that's because we're doing twin engine, but not that much. 
what this tells me is if I was having a real airplane, because this airplane is not flying that much faster than the Mooney, the Mooney would be a better buy because the Mooney's not going quite as fast, but I am only got one engine, one fuel I have to worry about, and I'd be making, I'd be more efficient uh, with the Mooney than, than flying around in the uh, Commander uh, 500S, the Aero Commander, because this is uh, not that much faster. I'm only doing 257 knots indicated to 193. Whereas I'm 140 and I'm 180 uh, at ground speed. So, and these, so X Plane does a pretty good job. It's, so, the answer to your question, yeah, I think it does. But now that you've got this, you can probably give me better feedback now because you've compare your real world experience versus, you know, the simulation that you saw me do here. So, to, in this video. So, anyway, sir, you take care. Basically, appreciate any feedback you have. And you have yourself a great one, and uh, you know, it's it's all good. You know, y your video was awesome. I greatly appreciate it very much. Take care, guy. Bye bye.